Do you want to pick up some trip pants, an eyebrow ring, some clip-in raccoon tail hair extensions, a Pierce the Veil shirt, and a Harley Quinn Funko Pop? If you said yes to all of the above, and I hope you did, then hop in because we are going to Hot Topic. What's up everybody, I am Finn McKenty, this is the Punk Rock NBA, and yes, today we are talking about Hot Topic. The store that was once the place where every punk or metal or emo kid would go to buy basically their entire wardrobe, but has since turned into something pretty different. If you've been to one of the stores recently, you know what I mean. These days you'll find more K-pop and Pokemon and Star Wars and Harry Potter merch than you will metalcore shirts. So what happened? How did Hot Topic go from all about the music to what it is now, which is basically a pop culture fandom store with a little band merch sprinkled in where there's room? I've got a few thoughts and I will do my best to answer that question in this video. But first, number one, if you haven't checked out the Punk Rock NBA podcast yet, please do so at the link in the description. Number two, for everybody who has asked, yes, I do have merch. There's also a link to that in the description. Number three, if you wanna talk about business with me, please connect with me on LinkedIn. I've been publishing a lot of business content over there. There's a link to that in the description as well. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Oh, hot topic. When did this open? Let's start with part one, setting the stage. The first time I saw one was in 1996 at the Great Northern Mall in North Olmsted, Ohio. One day my roommate knocked on the door to my room and she was like, hey, do you wanna to go to Hot Topic? I need to get some more Manic Panic hair dye. I had no idea what Hot Topic was, but I said, sure, why not? So we hopped in the car, a couple minutes later we were there and I could not believe what I was seeing. A store at the mall with a giant wall of punk and metal and hardcore shirts? You mean I can go over here, get an orange Julius and then walk 20 feet over here and get a bad brain shirt to go with it? My mind was blown because back then it was not easy to get stuff like bad brain shirts and hair dye and body jewelry and all that other stuff that we take for granted now as stuff you can just go pick up at Hot Topic or Amazon. Like if you wanted to get a Slayer shirt, that was actually not super easy to do. So that was my personal introduction to Hot Topic, but what I didn't know is that it had actually been around for quite a while before I ever found out about it. The company started way back in 1989 as kind of a mom and pop sort of thing quickly grew to 70 stores. And the company's history as we know it really starts in 1996 when they went public and became a truly mainstream mall retailer. Hot Topic. Which brings us to part two, building the empire from roughly 1996 to 2004. This was a period of huge growth for Hot Topic. They went from having 70 stores in 1996 to having about 350 in 2001 and then somewhere around 500 by 2004. And that is a lot by any measure. I mean, as reference, there's currently here in 2020 around 600 Hollister or Pac Sun stores, which are obviously huge brands. Hot Topic's store count was growing like crazy. And this is also, I think, when they really caught a cultural trend that put them on the map. To me, more than anything else, this era of Hot Topic is tied to the rise of new metal and I guess what you would call the mall goth thing. This is right around when Korn came out and kicked off the whole new metal explosion. Nine Inch Nails, of course, had been around for a while, but they really blew up here after the downward spiral. And maybe most importantly, at least for Hot Topic, this is when Marilyn Manson came on the scene. Antichrist Superstar came out, blew everybody's minds, made all kinds of mainstream news headlines, usually about how he was gonna turn your kid into some like gothic Satanist, devil worshiper, drug addict. She's told her lawyer she believes she is the daughter of Satan and that she wants to meet Marilyn Manson. And that got a whole generation of kids into like industrial goth music and culture. And if you were one of the many kids getting into this stuff for the first time, well, Hot Topic was your store. I could make a whole video about Marilyn Manson and I probably will, but really, if you wanted to sum up this whole era of Hot Topic and alternative culture in general in two words, those words would be big pants. Really, really big pants. Like these, or these, or these. Whether you were into new metal or industrial or punk or actually even emo, if it was the late 90s, you were probably wearing some massive pants made by brands like Jenko, Kickwear, Trip, UFO, AKA fat pants. I'm not actually sure where these came from. I know that Candy Kid Ravers were wearing them back in the 90s, skaters were wearing big pants since the early 90s, but they were absolutely everywhere in the late 90s and Hot Topic was the place to go to get them. And to me, this is when the Hot Topic brand really established itself. 
Like I said, Marilyn Manson, Corn, Limp Biscuit, Woodstock 99, these bands were like legitimate giant mainstream phenomenon. And if you wanted that look, you went to Hot Topic to get it. Like if you wanted to get some Jankos, a fishnet shirt and an eyebrow ring because you were like, you know what? I think I want to look like an extra in the Cold Chamber Loco video. Where do you go? Hot Topic. But in all seriousness, I actually think this is pretty cool. Was it a corny mall store for kids that didn't know about real metal or real industrial or whatever? Sure, I guess so, but compared to what? I mean, if you live in Evansville, Indiana or Mount Vernon, Washington, you didn't have a real punk or real goth store. Hot Topic was your only option. And I think for a lot of people, it was kind of a lifeline. Like if you were one of the three goth kids at your small town high school and everybody gave you shit for it, your parents didn't understand, called you a freak, well, you could at least go to Hot Topic and as long as you're inside that store, then you could feel like you fit in. That's true now, but I think it was especially true back then because in the late 90s and early 2000s, the Columbine shootings, I think made people like legitimately suspicious and a little bit afraid of goth kids. Like if you dressed like that and walked through the mall food court wearing a trench coat or whatever, you know, people would kind of look over their shoulder at you like, oh, is he one of those school shooter kids? Marilyn Manson foes say they only have to point to these kids to prove how dangerous the music can be. So Hot Topic was ground zero for that whole thing. And I think in the eyes of a lot of people like normies, I think it kind of still is to some extent. I think to a lot of people, Hot Topic is still synonymous with that whole like Marilyn Manson, trench coat mafia, cold chamber look kind of thing, even though they'd pretty much moved past that by the mid 2000s. And if you end up discovering that you are emo, then you should just embrace it because being emo is the best way to live life. Which brings us to part three, the emo years from roughly 2004 to 2008. This is the first example of what I think Hot Topic is incredibly good at which is understanding a little bit ahead of time when the trends are changing and adapting to that so they don't get left behind, but at the same time, staying true to their core customer, who I would describe as basically like the entry level alternative kid. And I don't mean that in any kind of like a gatekeeper kind of way. It's not a bad thing, it just is what it is. That's their customer. And by the mid 2000s, the dominant genre and lifestyle for that entry level alternative kid had changed where it was new metal and goth in the late 90s now it was pop punk and emo. This is the era of Fall Out Boy, My Chemical Romance, Taking Back Sunday, and The Used, or what I kind of jokingly call the mall screamo years. And I give Hot Topic a lot of credit for successfully pivoting to that scene because it's hard enough to catch one wave of a trend. It's even harder to successfully transition to the next one. But they did exactly that. And they became the place where you would go to get your striped hobo gloves, white belt, and all the Invader Zim merch that a suburban emo kid could ever wish for. And before I go on to the next era in Hot Topics history, there's a few things that I wanna note about this part. First of all, that as much as they were capitalizing on this trend, I think they were also a huge part of creating that trend. I mean, if you think about it, it's actually pretty crazy that legit bands like Fall Out Boy and My Chemical Romance went from playing grimy DIY venues like the Bloomfield Avenue Cafe or whatever to being like actual legit mainstream MTV stars Pete Wentz on the cover of teen magazines. And I think the machine that made that happen was the combination of MTV and Hot Topic. MTV gave these bands exposure on shows like the Osbournes and TRL and then Hot Topic was the place where you would go to buy their music and merch. Boop, boop, MTV, Hot Topic, which in turn made the bands even bigger stars and fed the whole cycle again. Uh, yes, it's on, like Donkey Kong. And as much as people talk shit on Hot Topic as being the place where clueless 12 year old posers shop, I think it's actually worth pointing out how legit their music section actually was. They carried stuff from labels like Epitaph, Drive Through, Victory, Trust Kill, and literally millions of kids got into punk and metal and hardcore and emo from that music section in the back of Hot Topic. So you can roll your eyes all you want at Hot Topic and pretend like you're too cool, but the honest truth is that they were the on-ramp to our culture for probably at least half the people watching this video. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that because this is not a contest about like who was the most underground when they were 13. I'm a hot topic, yeah. And lastly, it's interesting to me that as big as Hot Topic was at their peak, they were at about 700 stores, which is as big as any other mall retailer. There's really nobody else going after that Hot Topic customer. The closest thing was probably Spencer's, but even then I would say that's a little bit different. That's more of like the Ozfest, Red State Rock Festival, military wife, five figure death punch kind of demographic than the Hot Topic demographic. 
Last time I went there, I remember there was a wall of like fart machines and shot glasses with the Playboy logo on them. And aside from that, there was really no direct competition for Hot Topic that I can think of. American Apparel was for the hipster kid, Zoomies was for the skaters, PacSun was like the crappy version of Zoomies, and of course you had Abercrombie, Hollister, American Eagle, and Aeropostale for the preppy kids. But there was nobody going after that alternative kid even though Hot Topic had 700 stores and Fall Out Boy and My Chemical Romance were legitimate mainstream stars. So I'm kind of curious why nobody tried to compete with them there. I have a few theories, but that's a topic for another video. But anyhow, the mall screamo era started to fade out around 2007, and that brings us to the next era. Why would you make fun of us for like an Ask Alexandra and Bring Me the Horizon and- Part four, the scene years from roughly 2008 to 2014. To me, this is almost like the second prime of Hot Topic and to younger people, this may actually be the era that you think of as the definitive Hot Topic. This is the era when Warp Tour was at its peak, when you had metalcore bands like Of Mice and Men, Asking Alexandria, and Memphis May Fire in the Billboard Top 10, along with neon bands like All Time Low and Metro Station. And in terms of fashion, the big thing here, of course, was the scene look. I'll have to make a whole video about that one of these days because this was one of the most interesting moments in alternative culture to me. Neon skinny jeans, swoopy hair, the raccoon tail thing, rainbow animal prints everywhere, snake bite piercings, stretched ears. You guys know what I'm talking about. Your hair like means everything. Like if your hair is not emo, it's like what the fuck are you doing? I was obviously much older than any of the scene kids or like middle school, high school kids, but I was kind of watching it from a distance like the narrator on one of those national Geographic nature shows. And here we find the scene kid in his natural habitat, his bedroom, updating his MySpace. And Hot Topic was at the absolute heart of that movement. Scene kids and Hot Topic went together like Home Depot and suburban dads do. And again, it's easy to laugh at the whole scene thing because it was absolutely ridiculous. But at the same time, it was also the gateway to real metal and hardcore and punk for a whole generation of kids. In the same way as new metal and emo and goth were five or 10 years earlier. If you've seen my Instagram, you know, I always joke about how hardcore kids are like nervously hiding their woe is me tattoo because it's true. The scene kids of 2009 became the hardcore kids of 2013. I mean, who knows how many Madball tattoos out there are actually covering up an Of Mice and Men ampersand tattoo. And you have to give Hot Topic some credit for successfully changing with the trends yet again. This would be the second big pivot. And I think the reason they could pull that off is because they've always stayed really close to their customer. The people that they hired to work there are basically the same kid as their customer, only just a couple years older. They let their employees pretty much dress however they wanted so you could go to the mall and see people with a bunch of tattoos and piercings and crazy hair which made the store feel way more authentic i mean think about how lame it would be if there was a hot topic uniform like imagine the best buy polo shirt but it's black with red flames on the shoulder Hello, welcome to Hot Topic, I'm Kyle. May I help you find anything? I think that was a super smart decision on their part. Another thing I remember that they did was they had that binder at the back of the store where you could write in what band merch you wanted to see. I mean, it seems pretty obvious, right? If you wanna know what your customers are looking for, you just ask them. But can you think of any other brands that were doing that at the mall level? So I think you gotta give a tip of the hat to the Hot Topic management for that. And it's also worth noting that they've had pop culture stuff since the beginning, but this is the era where you started to see it take up a little bit more floor space every year with probably Harry Potter and Twilight being two of the biggest ones. Now it's kind of sad because I asked and they actually sold out of both Naruto and Green Goblin. And that brings me to part five, the geek years from roughly 2015 to now. These days, if you go to a Hot Topic, you'll still see that wall of band shirts at the back of the store, but the majority of the store is dedicated to what I guess you would call geeky pop culture fandom stuff. Whereas before they might have had a rack of like Slipknot, A Day to Remember, and My Chemical Romance merch right front and center in the store, now that same rack would be full of Riverdale, K-pop, and Marvel merch. And as you've probably noticed, their stores are fucking full of Funko Pop figures, so I imagine they sell a shitload of those things. And some people may say that they've sold out and abandoned their roots, but I don't actually think that's true. The way I see it, they've stuck with the same core customer that they've always had, that entry-level alternative kid, but what that kid is into has changed. Nerd culture is the new alternative. The kid that would have been into the used and Fall Out Boy in 2004 or Of Mice and Men and All Time Low in 2009. Now that same kid is into anime and Star Wars and Twitch and Animal Crossing. Music just isn't the center of their lifestyle like it used to be, especially not rock. Those kids do listen to some rock bands, My Chemical Romance being a good example, but they're just as likely to be into K-pop or rap. 
and merch just isn't as big of a deal in those genres as it is in rock. And as far as what killed Hot Topic, well, I actually don't think Hot Topic is dead at all. They're a privately held company, so I don't know what their financials are, but they do still have about 650 stores, very close to their peak. So I'm assuming that they're doing at least reasonably well, although retail in general, especially mall retail, is taking an absolute beating, and I'm sure that is affecting them to some extent. So it's not so much that Hot Topic died, it's more that the alternative youth culture that we knew 10, 15, or 20 years ago is dead. And for better or worse, the hot topic that you may have known died along with it. So to wrap all this up, what is Hot Topic's legacy? Well, to me, you can say what you want about it being a corny mall star, but to me, it was pretty legit. Sure, it's not quite the same thing as like a real goth or punk store that you had to seek out on the wrong side of town that's only open from noon to four on Tuesdays and everyone there is a complete asshole to you, which for some reason only makes you want to work harder to make them like you. It's not that, but it's pretty close, at least for a mall store. I mean, they sold Madball, Vandals, and TSOL records. Probably half the people in your favorite bands worked there at some point or another. That sounds pretty legit to me. As some people know, I worked at Hot Topic. Uh, Willowbrook Mall. And personally, I think it's awesome that they created a place where that kid, that young alternative kid who probably feels like a freak that doesn't fit in anywhere and doesn't know anybody else that's into the same stuff as them, a place where that kid can go and for once feel like they fit in. And like I said earlier, how many millions and millions of people who are now into real metal and hardcore and punk were once that kid walking into Hot Topic for the first time and just being so stoked on all this stuff? Probably a big chunk of the people watching this video, right? Topic. All right, my friends, that does it for this video about Hot Topic. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you were one of those kids that started their journey at Hot Topic, or maybe you were one of the people that turned up their nose and thought they were too cool for Hot Topic. Let me know either way. Also, if you haven't yet, please check out the Punk Rock NBA podcast. Number two, if you want to talk about business with me, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm publishing a lot of great business content over there. And number three, I want to thank everyone who supports the show on Patreon especially those of you who support at the true cult level or above. It is because of your support that we're able to do a lot of things, but especially the podcast. Because of you guys on Patreon, I'm able to hire a producer and editor that makes the whole thing work. I'm sincerely, genuinely grateful for each and every one of you. If you would like to support the show on Patreon, there's a link to that in the description. Patrons get access to every episode of the podcast a week early. There's a chance for me to review your band or YouTube channel or podcast or anything else you want to send my way. So if that sounds cool, check out the link in the description. And with that, I'm going to sign off for now, but I will see you next time.